It's a 100% guarantee. You lay your hand on the man of God. You got judgment coming down to your house tonight. Well, he's wrong. I don't care how wrong he is. You better keep your hands off the man of God. Everything, literally everything that Jesus Christ taught, they are not Christians. They do not follow the Bible. They don't care what Christ taught. They're in love with themselves. But you think all those things, they don't matter? God understands? God does not understand a woman cutting her hair. For home in your life, the God is causing those powers to be destroyed. And family, God is healing you. Thank God is healing you. Oh, that's it right there. Oh my God, tell me how you feel now. I feel like why do people think that they gotta yell their message? as if yelling gives that message more credibility. Let's talk about it. Yelling a message loudly doesn't make the words you speak more truthful. And many times, not always, what I've noticed is that people who yell their message are not interested in speaking what is right or what's true. In most cases, they're interested in proving a point and convincing their audience that the things they're speaking are indeed true. But there's an old saying that I heard, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So I want to encourage people to practice raising your words in truth and not raising your voice in lies. Screaming condemnation doesn't make the message become more clear, nor does it make the message more correct. Condemnation is condemnation, whether it's whispered in secret or whether it's shouted from the mountaintop and our words to each other matter. And as believers in the gospel or in the good news, we are led by the Spirit of God as we are children of God. And if the Spirit testifies that we are children of God, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Therefore, we have a ministry of reconciliation and not a ministry of destruction. Stop destroying the conscience of other born-again believers who have been reconciled to God. Encourage one another in the faith we share and remind them of who they are in Christ. Because all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So many of us today Today, you screaming and yelling in rash words to cut straight through others to get our point across. But it's the tongue of the wise that brings healing. And even if the message that's being yelled is indeed true, a lot of times what's being said is missed or misunderstood because it's getting screamed at you so you don't receive it. So many teach fear and destruction in their message, sometimes possibly without even realizing it, when the only reason we should fear is like we see in Hebrews 4, fearing that we do not enter into his rest. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. And the only way that you will come short of entering his rest is through unbelief. If you just keep reading Hebrews 4, you see, therefore, since the promise remains of entering his rest, God has promised that we must enter his rest. Let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. And this is how to fail to enter God's rest. For indeed, the gospel, the good news, was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. In other words, they didn't believe the gospel, so they didn't enter God's rest. But listen to the next verse. For we who have believed do enter that rest. The only labor is to labor to enter his 
rest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief or disobedience. Because as believers, we are to be obedient to the faith that we have been given. Through him, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. We also see this in Romans 16. But now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God, for obedience to the faith. Anyway, I got off track a little bit because I'm trying to figure out this hollering that's going on because it just seems exhausting in my opinion to be screaming like that, especially when you got a microphone right in front of your face. You could have invested that money somewhere else because I can hear you down the street without the microphone. Here's a question I got. Is the message less effective if you just said it in a normal voice? Is yelling the only way that you can add impact to your message. I mean, I'm all for getting excited and speaking with passion in the messages that we proclaim, don't get me wrong. But if I'm having a one-to-one -one conversation with someone, there's no way that I'm screaming it to them to make it more impactful. So I just don't understand why someone would get in front of hundreds and even thousands of people on the stage that you're essentially still just having one-to-one -one conversations with people just with your bigger audience and screaming scream at them. I personally think the yelling is just more of a learned behavior than anything else that we should consider adjusting in the body of Christ. Anyway, this is just something to think about. I hope that this message helps someone. Shalom.